All right, hello everyone, and welcome to Intro to Library Resources for Literary Research. Uh, this is part of a webinar series uh, that Georgia State University Library is doing this semester, uh, particularly for online students, but this will certainly be helpful to anyone doing library resource uh, library research this semester. Um, my name is Scott Piper. I'm a librarian at the Decatur campus. There we go. Uh, my contact information is spiper1. My email is spiper1 at gsu.edu. And you can see my phone number there. You are welcome to contact me if you have additional questions. And the person that I am co-presenting with today is Sarah Kirkley. She is a reference and instruction librarian at Clarkston campus. You can see her email and phone number there. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Sarah. Okay, um, so this is today's agenda and just some of the things that we're going to talk about in this presentation. So first we'll just talk a bit about the library and some general facts um, about us. Uh, we will also cover some search tips for your assignments um, when doing literary research. And, and um, we'll also spend a good chunk of time demoing and actually navigating through some of the databases listed here. So Blooms, Artemis, JSTOR, and then we'll look at the Discover search as well. And then we'll just wrap up with some additional resources and helpful um, tips and, and services available to you. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So just to talk generally about library resources and what librarians do, um, of course we help you find information and use library services. Um, we're going to talk today about specific uh, resources that we have that, that are good for literary research. Um, but in general, uh, librarians uh, uh, have been working on these types of assignments with professors and other students for many years, so we have uh, good backgrounds to help with all sorts of different topics. Um, this type of literature research uh, has been done for many years, so those of us that have experience uh, have done this type of, uh, have supported students in this kind of thing for a while. So we're a good, a good resource to use beyond um, your classroom instruction. Um, so please reach out to us. Uh, we can point you in the right direction. We can talk about your topics. We can talk about uh, searching, talk about um, uh, if you're not finding information that you think you should you should have. We can talk about uh, going deeper and digging in. We're going to talk about some tips today, but uh, we can really hone in and help you with some broader research strategies as well. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are here to help you. We've heard all sorts of questions before, so. Uh, we don't grade you, so don't feel bad about thinking that your question might be silly. Um, there's no such thing. So please reach out to us. Don't get stuck. Um, if you do get stuck, please call us. Please get in contact with us, um, and we'll show you how to do that towards the end. All right. Okay, so um, if we're being honest, right, most of us start our research by Googling something or just by doing a quick web search. And I just want to take a quick moment to talk about why, um, why using the library resources and some of these databases is kind of worth your time, right? Like why can't we just Google it? Um, and the first part of that is the reliability portion. So a lot of the resources in our databases, in our collections of resources, um, they may be scholarly or peer-reviewed, so that means they've gone through kind of an extra level of checking um, before being added in. And then also, um, as an academic institution, we subscribe, so we pay money to have access to these resources um, that complement our academic programs, that complement the classes, um, so it can be in some ways easier um, to go to some of the databases to find something that's relevant to, um, for example, this for this example, a literary research assignment. Um, so while 
there's nothing wrong with doing that little bit of pre-search online first. Just remember um, to eventually make your way to the library's website or to the um, your iCollege page where there's some links to library resources because it can, really can be to your advantage. All right, so literary research. We're going to go through some tips uh, uh, about literary research. It's a little bit different than doing a, a uh, argumentative paper where you're searching for a topic. Um, there's some specific things that you can do to help uh, find literary criticism, which are your secondary sources uh, that you need uh, to use with this type of assignment. So your primary research, uh, your primary source, of course, is the work that you're working on. Uh, but the secondary res resources, or the secondary sources, I should say are the ones that we're going to talk about today. So that is generally literary criticism. And literary criticism goes beyond, a lot of times, uh, what I would consider like a book report, where you're just describing the plot or you're just describing what happened in the book. This really places works in context. It talks about their authors and literary movements and where they fit in to literary theory. So you're really evaluating and interpreting a work of literature um, beyond just a summary. So we have databases that uh, have all sorts of literary criticism, and we're going to show you some search tips on how to use those databases and use those search tools um, to more effectively find articles that are relevant to your topics. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about um, are, is, are the search terms and some things to think about when you're um, deciding on search terms. Um, you never want to enter in your whole thesis into any of these search boxes that we're going to show you um, because that will throw off the database. And it's often much more accurate to limit yourself to a few search terms. Um, and some things to think about uh, when you're searching uh, is to use the author's name as a search term. And you can use, uh, and that seems pretty obvious, but some, you can use some various formats. Uh, Maya Angelou, for example, Angelou, comma, Maya uh, in a different word order, and Maya and Angelou as a database uh, uh, search feature there. Um, so some databases uh, are a little bit picky. Most will use a pretty simple format with names. But if you're not getting results, then you might want to vary the way that you're searching the author's name. Um, and you also could try the name of the work as a search. That, again, seems pretty obvious. Um, but sometimes you can get some strange results uh, if you don't use something like quotes. Uh, you can get wrong results, but you, you put your title. If your title is more than a couple words, you can put your title in quotes. So something like, as you like it, uh, all of those words are relatively common. But if you use quotes, it will keep it together as a phrase in that order. Um, so that is a very helpful tip that I use a lot uh, with literary research, is uh, putting the name of the work in quotes. Um, also, adding criticism as a search term. Um, like I said, most of the time we're looking for literary criticism. Um, so if you use your author's name and criticism, add that criticism as a search term. Um, you're going to find articles that, uh, that deal with uh, critiquing, the, critiquing your primary source. You can also go by topic. So um, if, your, if your work deals with a certain topic more than anything else, you can search that topic in a literary database, and it will place that topic in context. Um, it will talk about bullfighting in literature, talk about war in literature, talk about love in literature. Um, so keep that in mind as well. If you're if you're really looking for a topic and you're you're interested in that, then that can also be a great search term. Also, uh, search tip number two: know what you're searching. And this um, might seem kind of odd, but sometimes you're searching the full text, which means you're searching the name of your work, for example, anywhere in an article and it's going through and searching the entire article. Um, that sometime, sometimes is very helpful if you have an obscure work. Um, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming 
you have a work that's referenced in a biology paper, for example, if you're in one of the generic databases, um, you could be pulling up an, an allusion to a literary work in a biology paper or a history journal. Um, so sometimes full text uh, is helpful, sometimes it's frustrating, um, but just know what know what what the implications are with that. Um, the other time, the other uh, the other situation that op often happens is that you're searching what what librarians call an item record. Uh, so that is you're searching a description of the article, which will often include the title, the author, um, some subjects that librarians have identified, and descriptors. So that those descriptors are um, the uh, that are just basically summary items that can help you find the article, but you're not searching the full text, so you're not going to catch where uh, your 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 work is mentioned every time. Um, but this can be helpful because the item records are often talking will often show what the paper is talking about um, substantively. So it's a, if you if it's uh, if you find something in a subject, or excuse me, in an item record about your work, then it, that's uh, chances are that that article talks about your uh, talks about your article or talks about your work in depth. Uh, the other thing that you should look for in these databases that we're going to go to, and we're going to demonstrate this, of course, uh, are advanced searches and drop-down boxes. So all of these databases have advanced search features where you can go beyond keywords, um, and they also have drop-down boxes that can help you limit to a particular uh, field, limit to a particular uh, area that you want to search in the database, um, and some of these will allow you to do those full-text types of searches. Um, so we'll, we'll demonstrate some of these, but just be aware that these databases are designed to help you out. Um, especially these ones we're going to show you that are specific to literature. Okay, so um, some more search tips when you're looking at uh, general purpose databases, and some of the ones that we'll look at today are uh, JSTOR and the Discover Search. Um, you can try searching as your for your author by the, uh, as the subject. Um, so often these databases will have um, ways for you to search for a subject, and if you type in your author's name as the subject, that will um, give you information about the author rather than works by the author. Um, and in most of these databases, the article, the, the writer of the article, the person who authored that is considered the author, so that can get a little confusing um, when doing literary research. Uh, the helpful thing about some of the literary databases that we'll try to look at, like um, Blooms and Artemis, is that they um, are designed specifically for literary research. So um, they know more what you mean when you're typing in um, the author of a work's name. And um, they'll also have helpful search tools and tips um, for uh, entering the name of the work or uh, entering the, in um, the author's name and then narrowing it by the name of the work. So just know that not all databases have the same search functionalities and that depending on which one you're in, you might have to adapt your search just a little bit. Um, so we mentioned this a little bit earlier that some of the resources included in databases are considered scholarly or peer-reviewed. Um, and what that means is that um, uh, a researcher will write an article. Um, they then send it on to a journal to be published. Um, once at the journal, it goes through a peer review process there. So usually that's made up of other people within the same field. Um, other kind of experts in the field, and once they review it, they, the um, article is either then published, so it, it kind of passes the test and gets published in the journal, or it's, it's rejected and sent back to the author to revise. And so that's helpful for you to know um, just the kind of process that it goes through 
um, to wind up kind of in an academic journal. Um, also in some of the different databases, there will be options to um, use a, a filter or a limiter to narrow your search results to only include scholarly resources. Um, and in some da databases, you won't have to worry about doing that because um, all of the content within those databases is already scholarly. So here's a couple of examples with JSTOR and Bloom's literary reference. Um, also, when you're searching, you can use some of these um, tools to kind of make your search a little bit more specific. So they're called Boolean operators, um, and they're really just the words AND, OR, and NOT in all caps. And you can see that they, um, you can see they're in all caps as it's kind of like an indicator to the system that you're using it as this, as this tool to connect your search terms. And so this is an illustration of what those um, search operators will do for you. So if you use AND to combine two search terms, you will get less results, right? Because you're narrowing it and you're looking for results with both of those terms or subjects. Um, if you use OR, you're going to get more results because you're looking for either term or subject. So um, that will kind of expand your search if you're not getting uh, getting many for your for your first search term, and then not can just eliminate one search term, um, and again that will kind of help you help you narrow it um, if you're getting a lot of results with some subject or term that you're not interested in and you kind of want to get rid of those. Um, but for most of us, I think the one we'll use most often is and but it's helpful to know that the other ones um, are out there and, can, and can, can be used. So here's an example of a, a Boolean search where we combined an author's, um, a title of a work, an author's name, and um, we eliminated the word or subject film. So we're really focusing only on um, this author and this work. All right, so now we are going to take a look at a couple of these databases. Um, the easiest way to find these is actually through iCollege, especially if you're working through, at home, um, because you can get into these databases uh, with one click. Um, Sarah mentioned that we pay subscriptions for these, so all of these databases are password protected. But if you go through iCollege, um, that eliminates the need to get that password. So I'm going to share my internet browser here. All right, so from the iCollege homepage, we can click at the top. You've got your general menu up here at the top, and you've got your, your class uh, menu down here at the bottom. Uh, but if you see that button for Galileo, all of these databases are housed within Galileo. That's our collection of research databases. So if we click on Galileo, that will open up uh, the Galileo homepage. And since we know the name of these articles, we can go straight to these databases through the Databases A to Z tab. Um, at this point, I would discourage you um, from using this Discover tool for now. Uh, Sarah's going to show you some tips on how to use that in just a minute. Um, but when you come to the Galileo homepage, uh, go to, to find the specific databases we're going to talk about. Go to the databases A to Z. And right now we're looking for Blooms. So Blooms is going to be under B. And you've got a list. You can see the library has hundreds of databases and dozens of literature databases. Um, but you can see Blooms in alphabetical order. And we click on Blooms to get access to it. All right, great. So here's the home page. This is what Blooms literature looks like. 
Um, and you can already tell if you're looking at the screen that it's, it's designed for literary research. So you've got um, a way to search by authors, search by the works, and that's your, your, primary, your primary source. You can search by characters if you're looking for a particular character. Um, this particular database also has um, some videos, so some, uh, some videos that you can watch um, if, you're, if your professor allows that type of, type of source. Um, you've got ways to search by literary movements, literary themes. Um, you've got some suggestions on how you can write about certain works. So it really helps you um, hone in on, on ways, to, uh, ways to find things related to your works very, very quickly. Um, Blooms, as we mentioned, uh, has a lot of content, um, critical essays from a lot of different literary journals, um, and also a lot from um, a man named Harold Bloom, who was a, a prolific editor of uh, literary criticism. So we're going to look at a works search. And here you can see we've got, you can search by title. You can search by author. We're going to do a title search. And we're going to do the yellow wallpaper by Charlotte, Perk uh, Charlotte Perkins Gilman. And you can see it auto-completes it for me. And I click on where it auto-completed it. And here's your results for the, the yellow wallpaper. Now, uh, this database, you have all results on this first tab. And then you have it divided out over different types of articles that are available. So you have biographies. So these will be biographies of Charlotte Perkins Gilman in various sources. So you've got specialized encyclopedias. Um, you've got specialized uh, literary works. Um, so that can be helpful if you're looking for biographies. You've got overviews of the work. Um, you've got analysis and criticism, which is where you're probably going to spend most of your time. And then you also have topics and themes. So this I mentioned that you can find literary themes in these databases very quickly and how your work fits into those themes. So if we go back to the analysis and criticism tab, we can look at one of these uh, one of these articles, you've got even within analysis and criticism, you have different types. You can do a thematic and structural analysis, um, but we're going to look at one of the criticism articles, and we'll click on the title there. So here is the article. You can see our search uh, terms are highlighted, so that'll give you a. This is an article that mentioned a lot of works. You can very quickly find where the yellow wallpaper is mentioned. But this gives a nice long article. And at the bottom, you've got uh, your notes. You want to look for things that have uh, well-referenced uh, uh, well -referenced sources that they use to come to their conclusions. And you also have your citation information down here at the bottom. And up here at the top, you've got more database tools. You've got more tools in this database. And these are pretty common to these databases we're going to be talking about. Uh, you can email this to yourself. You can print it. You can also bring it will pop you right down to that citation information there. Um, it's, it defaults to MLA. Um, the caution that I will give you is that these are not always 100% accurate, especially punctuation and formatting. Um, so be very careful when you copy this over your works cited list. Be sure you're following your professor's instructions. Um, sometimes, for example, so your, for example, your instructor might not want that URL for the article. Um, but just be sure uh, that when you copy it over, it's all correct based on MLA. All right, so we're going to scroll back up real quick. That's that article. And again, you can get to those literary movements uh, up here at the top. Uh, Yellow wallpaper has a lot to do with Gothic literature. So you can look at different themes within Gothic literature. And let's see, Insanity might be a good one for the yellow wallpaper. And then you have a short article on Insanity from the Encyclopedia of Gothic Literature, Specialized uh, Encyclopedia. And this one mentions Charlotte Perkins Gilman and the yellow wallpaper. Um, so those are some uh, quick ways, and I hope you can see that, uh, especially in this case, how this is designed to help you with your literary research. All right, so that is Blooms. 
and let's go back. We are going to look at Artemis. And again, the same way that we found blooms in that A to Z list in Galileo, you go back to the Galileo homepage and look under A for Artemis, and that will bring up Artemis Literary Sources. We're going to look um, this database. A lot of them these days have these very tempting search boxes. Uh, they want to look like Google. Um, but you can see we mentioned looking for advanced search features. So this one has a button that says Advanced Search. So we're clicking on that. All right. So here you've got more boxes and more uh, ways to narrow things down. You can search by keyword. And here, and this is what Sarah had mentioned at the beginning, here in a literary database you can search by the name of the work. You can search by the person, which is by or about. So you're getting the author and secondary sources there. And then you've got some, uh, some other options to narrow things down. If your professor is giving you a specific publication that they like, um, there are certain journals that professors will recommend. Um, so you can narrow things down to types uh, before you hit search. Um, but for this one, we're going to do the things they carried. And I'm using quotes uh, to keep that together as a phrase, right? We mentioned that. And things they carried, three very common words. Uh, but with using those quotes, it keeps that together as a phrase. Um, and, and that is helpful even in literature databases. And then the I know the author, so Tim O'Brien. And he's an American writer, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that suggestion um, from the database. So now we're searching. And this is also using uh, what Sarah mentioned, those Boolean operators. Uh, if you can see the search box here, we're doing the name of the work and and that's important. That little and is important. We're doing things they carried and Tim O'Brien. And with this database, they've already built in those uh, search term operators for you. Um, so it's a little bit easier to keep those straight. So we're searching things they carried and Tim O'Brien. We're going to hit search. Get your result list. All right. So. We have your result list here. We have literary criticism. We have biographies. And these are, again, separated out by the type of article. We've got topic and work overviews. And then we've got reviews. Um, we will go back up to the top because most of what you're going to be looking at are these literary criticism. Now, when you first open your search results in Artemis, um, these are basically preview windows. So you'll see that it'll give you three or four articles under literary literature criticism, but there's really 103 results. So if you click on that View All, you can get to all of the articles that come up as literature criticism. Okay, That's just something to pay attention to. All right, and you can also uh, uh, limit by content type here on the left. So you can get back to those biographies, back to those topic overviews on the left as well. If you're looking for something specific from your thesis, you can uh, take out a search term and use that search term from your thesis in this little search box. Uh, you've got subjects, and you can view more of those. Uh, things they carried is about Vietnam, so you would expect uh, to find a lot of articles on war stories, on the Vietnam War, soldiers. And you also notice that it will uh, bring up characters in the story. So again, if you want to limit if you're looking at a particular character and uh, how they fit into the what fit into the work you can drill down and get those seven articles right there on Paul Berlin for example or you could go from the from the start and search for that character uh, from the initial search page so lots of different subjects you could uh, that give you suggestions to work on you also have publication titles uh, I mentioned sometimes your professor will have some suggestions on some good, uh, good, uh, good sources, and these are uh, individual journals and individual um, collections of articles um, that you could use. We'll do less of those. Okay, so we will look at let's look at one of these articles that came up. Um, let's look at uh, getting it right: the short fiction of Tim O'Brien. 
this was uh, originally published. This is your publication information. Originally published in a journal called Critique in the spring of 1999, and it was reprinted in short story criticism, which is kind of a, a an anthology of criticism that um, is used often uh, in libraries. Uh, so if we click on the title, uh, this gives a very brief, maybe one sentence about what the article is about. Um, but we'll click on the title to get to the full article. And there is the full article in full text. We search the things they carried. So those will show up in different tech and uh, uh, highlighted for you. And then you've got your works cited list and a source citation down here at the bottom as well. And like Blooms, they have featured, this database has features that will help you organize your research. So you've got your citation tools. You can email this to yourself. You can download it. Um, you can print it. Uh, in this database, you can actually download it as an MP3 if you'd like to um, listen to it. Um, and then you have some related subjects here on the left. So this came up. Um, Tim O'Brien, things they carried uh, with four stories. And that's, that makes sense for this type of work. All right. So that is that article. We'll go back to the search results. And you can do the same thing with these other articles. Um, I like this database. It gives you a word count. So you can see the real big substantive articles, uh, several thousand words. You want to look for ones that are relatively long so that you can uh, or, or at least in a lot of cases, uh, some of these that are pretty long go into more, uh, a little bit more in depth. Um, some of these will also have uh, the PDF version, which is very helpful as well. Um, it loads quick. Okay, this isn't. Oh. I'm going to load real quickly, um, but it's uh, often helpful. Oh, there it goes. Uh, it's often helped you, helpful to look at it as it was published um, instead of that full text. So this gives you the option um, of looking at it as it was published. And it's usually a little easier to grab uh, page numbers when you're doing your in-text or you're doing your citations, right? And you can view that within the screen there, or you can go to full screen. It will blow it up. That's awfully, awfully small text in some cases. All right, so those are some of the helpful features of Artemis. And again, the home page, um, you've got that little search box. And, and sometimes this is, this is OK if you just want to work, uh, get started. And these will often um, autocomplete for you as well. So you can still get to good articles um, from these search boxes. But using the advanced search, you can get um, a little more specific before you jump into your to your list of articles. All right. All right. So with that, I am going to turn it back over to Sarah. So I'm just going to share my screen, and we're going to um, move on and look at a couple of other places to search. So I am here on the JSTOR homepage, which is another database. Um, you can get to this page by going to the same A to Z database list and just jumping to the J's. Um, and this one's good uh, for literary research, but it is interdisciplinary in nature, so it won't have some of those um, helpful tools that we saw in some of the, the ones that Scott just demonstrated that um, have ways to narrow it by the name of the work or the author. Um, so we need to be really clear in our search to let um, this database kind of know what exactly we're looking for. Um, so I'm just going to do an exa a couple of example searches, and I'm going to start by doing the author's name. So I'm going to do William Faulkner, and we're going to look at um, my results just by searching this name and see what happens.
Okay, so just by doing the, the author's name, I got um, quite a few results, right? I got over 24,000, which is way too many for us to look through. And um, most of them, just kind of browsing through the top few, look like they're just about the author. Um, and they don't seem to be focusing on any specific literary work. So what I would probably want to do is go back um, and modify my search here. And I can either go to advanced search to combine some different search terms, or I can type it in um, this same search box and use my own operators. So in this case, I'm just going to do um, the author's name as well as the name of a short story, just to make it clear that I only want results focusing on this story and this author. Okay, so my results number went down pretty dramatically from around um, 24,000 to around 200. So that's a much more manageable number. And then I can also even narrow it further from here. Um, so I could do, there's a, an option right beneath the search box on this results page where I could search within. So if I was only interested in these results that focus on, um, say, the narrator or a specific theme, I could search again within these 200 results. Um, I can also narrow them based on the content type or the format. So if I'm only looking for sources from journals or sources from books, I could choose either of those options. Um, some of the others, access options, so ones that I can view immediately, that's kind of the same as um, in some of the other databases it might be referred to as full text, but that just means I can actually um, read a copy online while I'm accessing the article as well as download a copy or save a copy. Um, and then I can also play around with the relevance if I'm, how it's sorted, if I'm more interested in the more relevant resources or if I'm researching a topic where I want something that's really new, I could choose that. Um, but for literary reference, um, the date and the kind of newness or recent, recent how recently something was published um, isn't quite as important as it might be in, say, uh, if you were doing research on um, something science related. So um, those options are there so that you can play around with and modify your search um, to change up your results. And then you can see just below is your, again, your list of results um, for your search. And each one lists the uh, the title of the article. Um, beneath that, it lists the author or authors. And then right beneath that, it will typically list the title of the journal um, and any publication information. So the volume number, the issue number, the date it was published, and then the page range within the journal. And all of these have this little um, indicator below of the type of source. So these first few are all journal from journals. Um, we're going to look at the second one as an example. So I'm going to click on the title of the article to get a bit more information. So it kind of expands um, upon some of that publication information here. Um, there's also links to go to the full, um, back to the full issue of the journal and to the journal homepage if you're interested in more information about it. Um, but your article, probably what's most useful is listed right below. Okay, and again, in this one, your search terms are all going to be, they're all highlighted kind of as they appear throughout the, the article. Um, this uh, database does have some tools that you can use to kind of save or keep up with resources as you find them. Um, this one does not have an email option, but you can download the PDF and you can um, save, yourself, save a copy and then send it to yourself that way or 
maybe upload it to your Google Drive or your um, your OneDrive, however you choose to keep up with your resources. Um, but this is the PDF version of the article, which is again just how it would have appeared in in the print version, and it's helpful for getting those page numbers that you'll use for your in-text citations. Um, and again, I think it's usually a little bit easier. Uh, it's formatted in a way that's a little bit easier to read. So I'm going to go back to my record page. Um, so this page also, in addition to the, the PDF version of the article, it also has a Cite This Item feature. So again, this one um, is a computer-generated or database-generated citation, kind of pulling from the different fields um, of information about the article or resource. So this one, um, it similar to the others, it may not be 100% accurate, but it can be a helpful place to start. So you can um, copy and paste this into your uh, Works Cited, and then again, checking it, making sure everything is correct and that it, it meets all the, the parameters. Um, or if you're using um, a citation management system, you could also export it that way. So different options here. Um, but again, just that caveat that they're not perfect, and I don't. And this one is an example. I don't think you would. You'd probably want to list all the authors, and um, I'm not sure about how this volume and issue number are displayed. So things like that, just double check. Okay, so I'm going to close this. And again, your article is displayed at the bottom if you just want to scroll through it and click through and read it. Um, while you're searching within the database too. Okay, so lots of options for accessing your content as well as saving it and, and accessing it at a later date. Okay, so I'm going to back up to my search results. And again, um, we, we wound up getting around 200 results for this search, but we could do some other things. Again, adding in another search term here, like maybe criticism and criticism um, could help, or if you're focusing on a particular character or theme, you could also make that clear in your search as well. Okay, so that's JSTOR, and that's just kind of a basic overview of that one. Um, the next place we're going to go is to back to iCollege. So I've got mine open here, and you can see that there are um, on your home page, on all of the um, our accounts on the home page, there should be a box for the university library. In addition to having some helpful links and resources, so library's website, um, where you can ask a librarian, things like that are helpful. But there's also this discover search box. So if you're um, if you're like me and you see a search box, that's probably the first place that you'll try your search, right? Um, but just to be clear that Discover is not actually a database in itself. It is a search engine. Um, it tries to be like Google, and it, it searches multiple databases at once. So earlier when we were looking at the list with Scott, we saw there were hundreds of databases. This, again, it tries to search um, as many as possible. There are some databases where their results are not included um, because of vendor and publisher disagreements. So just be aware that while you can use this and it can be a helpful place to start, um, there might be some really useful resources that aren't included. So it, it can also be to your advantage to go to that actual A to Z list and pick some individual databases to try also. Um, also, since it's searching so many databases at once, it, uh, it's searching across all different fields of study and all different academic disciplines. So similar to our search in JSTOR, we want to be really specific about what we're, about what we're looking for. Um, and I want to do the same example search that I did before so we can just see kind of the differences in our search. Um, 
and how the kind of number of results we get change. So I'm going to do a search just for the author's name first. Okay, so my search for just the keywords, William Faulkner, got over 140,000 results, which is more than we got when we searched initially in JSTOR, right? So we're getting, that's in some ways, right, that's great that there are so many resources on this author. Um, but on the other hand, over 140,000 is way more than any of us could feasibly look at to know, you know, which ones were the best for us and for our topic. So from here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add in some other helpful things like the title of the story that we're focusing on. And again, you can do that by typing it in this um, main search bar, or you can go to advanced search, which gives you multiple search bars and options there. Um, so that narrowed it down a little bit. We still have over a thousand, but we can use some of these filters on the left side of the screen to make our search more specific. Um, so I'm going to select full text. Okay, and that's going to make sure that I can actually get to the the article or the content of the material. Um, and in some cases, it might be listed right beneath. So this is the title of the article, and then that's showing you that there's a PDF associated with that. Um, this second one shows that um, instead of a PDF, it's showing this Find It um, button for Find It at GSU. And what that does is tries to link you to the full text within a, a specific database. So this can be helpful and sometimes you can still get to the content. You just might have to click through a few more things than if you just had the PDF right there for you. Um, a couple other options. So if you're narrowing by a specific format, um, you can do academic journals here. Or if you're looking for purely scholarly resources, you could choose this option here. So I am going to do scholarly peer-reviewed journals. And then a few more things to point out, just that if you need something more recent, um, depending on your topic and your assignment, you can change and narrow by the publication date here. I'm not going to worry about it for this search. And then there's a few more filters listed below. And the last one I want to point out that I find really helpful is the subject one. So if I click on this, it's giving me ideas for some other search terms or some other subjects that I can add into my search to make it more specific so that I'm getting less results. Um, so this third one down, criticism, that might be a really useful one to combine with my search. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to look at an example, and you can see by using all of these different tools, we've wound up narrowing our results down a lot. So we modified our search here, we chose a couple filters and a subject on the left side of the screen, and now we got down to 97 results, which is much more manageable than our initial over, you know, 135,000. So same idea as some of the other databases, you'll just select the title to get a bit more information. And this takes you to a record page. Um, so this is not the article itself. The article is over here on the left where the PDF link is, but this is all information about the article. So you can see that this one, um, this is the title, Narrative Motivation in Faulkner's A Rose for Emily. Um, the author is listed. The source is the publication. So that's the name of the journal where this was published. And then this is your um, publication information. So the date, um, the volume and issue number, the page range, all that helpful information that will go into your citation is here. Um, these subjects can also be useful, and you can see they're all hyperlinked. So you could click on any of these to go to 
more sources that have the same subject kind of attached to it or assigned to it. Um, this abstract is also useful. It gives you an idea of what's covered in the article. So it's not exactly a summary, but it does give you an idea usually of what's covered and um, and so that you can know if it's going to be, get an idea of whether or not it will be useful before reading through the whole article. Um, and then the last thing I want to point out on this page is this database. So we didn't, so again, we searched in Discover, which is not a database because it's searching so many different databases at once. And so this article actual, actually came from this database, Master File Elite. That also goes in your citation, so that can be helpful to know where it's actually pulling from. And if you're getting a lot of good results from, say, Master File Elite or some from, from some other database, you could maybe go to that specific one and try, try searching there, too. Um, same idea with some of these tools on the right. So you can email this to yourself, and it will send the PDF as an attachment. You can save a copy to your um, computer, to your flash drive. You can uh, get the permalink to get a URL to come back to this page. Um, lots of different helpful tools here, as well as a citation tool that, like we looked at in some of the other ones. Um, so for this one, you can see there are a lot of different styles listed. I'm going to scroll down to MLA. And then there's your example here. And again, um, you definitely want to check for correctness. Um, in this case, I'm not sure it would be appropriate to have the title of the work in all caps. So you just, again, check for those kinds of things before just using it. Um, but it, it's, it's a really good place to start. Okay, so all that, and then we can actually look at the article, right? So here's the, the PDF version. And it's going to be similar to the other ones that we looked at in that it's um, basically a, a scanned version of how it would have appeared in, in print. So ours starts at near the bottom of this page, and we can kind of scroll through to view it um, here. And again, the same tools are listed on the right side of the screen if you want to print, email it, save it look at the citation, all those things are still available uh, from this, the view on this page. So I'm going to back up to my results list. And again, just a quick reminder, um, we modified our search to make it a bit more specific to include the, the author and the name of the work. We added in a few filters. Um, to only get full text results and scholarly or peer-reviewed journal articles. And then lastly, we went down to the subject field and we chose criticism. Okay, so all different things that we did to, to make our search go down from um, over 100,000 to around 100. So, um, so that's, that can be helpful in searching and using Discover because it can be a bit overwhelming when you get all those results in your first search. So just know that you can always um, modify and play around as you go. And if you check something and you're not getting useful results, you can always back up as you go too. So that's the Discover tool. Again, it's pulling from lots of databases, so you kind of want to keep track of where it's actually, where the information is coming from. Um, and depending on your research, it can be a helpful place to start, or it can be more useful to go straight to one of those literary databases and um, you know that are more more designed for those resources. So lots of options. Um, last thing I want to do is go back to the to my iCollege page, and I want to show you guys um, some information uh, here. So we talked about some of these helpful links. I'm going to jump to the first one, University Library homepage, which is just the library's website, and point out some of our tools. So we have a chat option on the right side of the screen where you can enter a question um, and get a response. It's typically staffed during um, our hours of operation. Um, 
there is some um, information on our different campuses. So no matter which campus um, you attend in person or online, you're welcome to visit any of the campuses to use any of the resources. Um, and then over on the left side of the screen is that same Discover search that we did from iCollege. So you can try the same thing here. You can look at specific databases by subject. So for this example, you might want to go to uh, English. Or if you knew the name of one, like Artemis, you could just go to the A's and find it from there. So lots of ways to get to back to this, some of the things that we looked at today. Um, a couple other things, general information about the library, so more information about the various campuses, um, as well as some of our policies and helpful information. And then um, the second tab, the search collections, can also be useful for knowing um, what some of the different things and tools we have do, as well as a link back to Galileo if you're looking for that. Um, so lots of helpful information is all kind of housed on this page too. But if you're not, if it's not clear or you're not able to find it, you can always chat with us or you can search with, search some of our frequently asked questions, um, call us, email us, lots of different ways to get in touch um, because that's why we're here is to help you navigate and find some of these, find what you need for your, um, for your work. So I think uh, that's all I have. Great. Well, um, just to sum up real quick, um, we've gone through some search tips, we've looked at specific databases, um, and we've spent an hour doing that. So it can take a while to get oriented to some of these library resources. Um, but we really don't want you to struggle finding these secondary sources for your literary criticism. So if you are having trouble, um, any librarian at any campus, we've shown you contact information and the chat feature. Um, so please reach out to us. We're always happy to, happy to help. Uh, the library gets um, can be complicated, so reach out. Don't suffer. Um, just let us know what we can do for you. Thank you very much. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.